plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. Hold tight and welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. <laughs> Today is going to be a really sexy video all about radiator elements, okay? So you've probably seen out in the market that you can get dual fuel towel rails. And if you stumbled by this video thinking, what should I have when you're redoing your shower or whatever, and you're thinking about putting a new towel rail in, we'll see this as a bit of a guide as to how they work and what they do. You can also have towel rails that are just on the electrics, and obviously you can also have them so they're just on your heating system. What I'm going to do is show you today how to install one that is just on the electrics. But if you want to convert it over to the heating system it's so so easy we'll draw you a little diagram and then you'll know exactly what to do so anyway the advantages obviously of having a dual fuel towel rail are basically have a nice warm towel rail in the summertime okay when you still want to dry your towels out you just have that on the electrics okay uh, and that'll heat your towels up but you don't have to have your whole heating system on with the boiler bashing away making your whole house really hot which is really really annoying so that's the first thing that's really really cool the second thing is obviously the versatility of being able to have two types of heat and supply that's really really good as well the slight downside and i'm actually going to address it now when we install it on this rad here is that if you wanted to use one of these in a room to actually ambiently heat the room up which is what we're going to use this for now it, it would basically not work very well because you don't have that thermostatic room sensing temperature so it was kind of funny that a few weeks ago we were asked by one of our viewers on the ask the plumber videos that we do uh, that they're going to be installing one of these element heaters and they wanted to know how do you thermostatically control and also have like a programmable timing for one of these radiators to come on and off basically i posed this question to our sponsors at drayton and they said that they do have a product that can actually switch the supply on and off using a wireless room thermostat so we're going to show you as well not only how to install one of these, not only the principle of how they work, but we're even going to give you that extra bit of knowledge that if you want to have a programmable stat on it and have it actually you know, sense in the room temperature, then you're going to be able to do that as well. So I hope you enjoy today's video. If I get a chance, I'll see if I can get George, my cat, out of bed to come along because uh, he always loves a good video, as you all know. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. And remember, everyone, what you've got to do, you got to hold tight. So, number one, we've got an absolutely beautiful radiator here. And seriously, I'm not name dropping when I say it, but this radiator was donated to us by our other sponsors, Trade Radiators. And we've actually made a video for them in particular to use on their website about this radiator here. So if you want to go and uh, watch that video, pop over to their website or go to their YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And also I'll leave a link to the Drayton controls that we are going to install on this video too. What you have, the great thing about a column radiator like this, especially if we're trying to demonstrate the heating capabilities of a towel rail, is the fact that you can put an element all the way along the bottom of it in exactly the same way as you would up the side of one of your normal towel rails. Basically, what we're going to do is we are going to snap it off and take out where you would usually have your valve, okay? And then we're going to put our element all the way down the centre of here and basically get it nicely tightened up. But before we begin with the ins and outs of actually installing one of these elements, let's pop over to the whiteboard where I can give you a really good idea about the principle of how they work, how you can make them dual fuel as well, and basically the ins and outs of what's going on when it comes to using an electrically heated towel rail or radiator like the one we've got here. So basically what you'd often have is, let's just say that we're going to be doing this particular radiator here. You'd have a radiator like so with a flow coming from your boiler with hot water coming in here, going around the radiator and heating it up, and then basically leaving and going back off to the boiler. If we were to look at this normally as if it was just a standard heating supply from the boiler, you'd have your flow pipe coming up here, going through your valve, and off into your radiator to be heated up, okay? Now, what you actually do is you scrub this idea, okay? You still have your standard half inch part just in here like so, but instead, you have a T-piece that looks something like this. <laughs> I'll do my best. So the T-piece, right, allows, it's got a thread here that allows you to thread in your element, your heating element, straight all the way down into there. But also, it has a thread here, and this all mixes up. This will seal there nicely and seal there nicely. That allows your pipe with water to come in as well. So that means then you can insert, you've got a lovely gap all the way up here where you can put in a dual fuel electric element. And basically it works out for a standard towel rail as well. We'll just zoom in on one of the edges that we'd be working on, okay? So, something like so, like that. Right, so you've got your lovely towel rail 
all there, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Standard half inch connection just there at the bottom to allow water in. If you weren't gonna have this as a dual fuel towel rail, all the other ends you'd bung up using a small half inch blanking plug, or whichever side you choose to do, as long as you put it on the bottom. You could then have your element will go all the way up this side here like so. Uh, and then you've got your thread there, and then, I mean, most of them have a small white cap with a lead going into the wall, off to your um, electric supply. The one we've got today that we're gonna have has actually got some different temperature settings on it, so it's a little bit more than what you usually have. So this is basically the way that it all works. The one thing you need to think about when filling up one of these radiators after you've installed your element is, if it's sealed, like this one here, and it's not on the heating system, you need to allow somewhere for cold water to expand. Now you can't really compress water on a heat system, it just doesn't want to be compressed up, but you can compress air. So when you're filling up your towel rail or your lovely big old radiator like this, try to be sure to leave a couple of inches as an air cushion at the top of the radiator to allow that water somewhere to expand into. That's really, really important. You've got a rough idea, hopefully now, about how these work. Basically now, I'm gonna show you how we install one on this lovely big cast iron rad that we've got here now, and I hope you enjoy it. Hold tight. So then, number one, if we come down and have a look here, you're gonna see that I've got a lock shield on here. And this is really only for demonstration purposes, and also because uh, we might need to drain this rad out in a day or two, and basically it acts as a, as a bit of a drain off as well, so that's pretty handy. I mean, a lot of times, if I was gonna have this as a properly sealed radiator, I'd get a standard proper drain off cock that goes to half inch male, and then you can just thread it into there, and then you've got a nice little drain off there for your radiator. We've got a little bit there for our electric, just in there that's been lovingly installed by the electrician so yeah we're going to remove this nipple just here uh, and basically that's going to get us ready to install our lovely element now obviously at this point here if we were going to have this a dual fuel rad we'd have a small t-piece here one to take our new uh, radiator pipe up here and one to feed our element through like we described earlier on when we were on the whiteboard so as you can see, if we actually lay out the element, this is quite a long element here that's gonna go under quite a lot of this radiator and heat quite a lot of it up nice and quickly. So we'll pop our element all the way through like this. Now, if we look closely at the element itself, we can see they've got a nice little rubber bung on here, but if you want, you can put a little bit of PTFE tape on here. Also, take note that you've got the hexes here, so don't use the head or any of the electrical components to actually tighten this up. Now we can use this here just to get this properly nice and tight. Right, so now we've actually got our element in, we've sealed up all our other edges, or we've piped the radiator up. The next thing you do before you do any wiring up whatsoever is actually fill the radiator up. If you turn on one of these elements and the radiator is dry, it's just gonna burn the element out within a matter of seconds. So get it nice and fill it with water straight away. If you're doing it so it's just an electric element on here, it's very important to put some sort of inhibitor to stop the radiator corroding inside. Also, if you're having it in a standard heating system, a dual fuel way of doing it, uh, make sure that you fully fill up the radiator from the system, uh, vent the radiator properly. You don't need to worry about leaving an air buffer on that because the system will have its own expansion areas elsewhere. So what I'm gonna do is fill up this radiator now. I usually use a special hose that I use for inhibiting systems. Uh, basically, I'm gonna fill it up so it gets just roughly to the top there, and then I'm gonna leave it with that little air buffer at the top so it's got somewhere to expand to. Because we've got a certain type bleed valve at the top there, it's better that I use the drain cock that we've put at this end here to fill this up. The added advantage of doing it like this as well is that I can use the method that I often use when it comes to filling these up. I use a clear hose. Now the good thing about having a clear hose is you can put it up next to the radiator, put your inhibitor and your water and your additive into the rad, but most importantly, you get a really accurate idea about how far you've filled it up, which is very handy when you're looking to leave that small air gap at the top for the expansion. So all I need to do is basically very, very quickly attach that on there, give that a quick nip up. Then I've got my fill tub that I've made that I use for inhibiting nearly everything that I do. I use my little fill tub that I've got here. And don't worry, I don't call it fill. Then we're pretty much ready to go. So a good thing to do as well, if you're filling it up in this kind of way, is just to slacken off this bleed screw here. First thing I'm gonna do is just tip in a small amount of water. So now's the time as well, especially for this cast radiator, I just check the sections, make sure that any joints you've made anywhere, if it's on a towel round or on a radiator like this, 
isn't leaking before you actually chuck in a tub of inhibitor to make sure that there's no rust in. And at the moment, all looks to be good. If you bear with me, I'm just going to get a few more bottles and uh, start getting this nicely filled up. Right then, so about a decade later of me filling this up, I mean these take a lot of water. You now see, uh, if you guys come a bit closer, I'll show you what level we've filled this rad up to. So basically, as you can see, we've actually got a water level now. This is still open. We've got a water level now that's just about here. So it leaves us a nice sort of 10% at the top of the radiator as a good air cushion for our expansion. What I can do now is shut this valve down at the bottom, take this off, okay, we'll get a little bit of blob of water out, but I've got a towel there to catch it, and then we'll move on to the next bit. So at this point, most of you are just gonna probably wire up your electric element. Make sure that whatever you're wiring it to is you know, electrically sound, make sure it's properly installed. If at any point you're not happy doing electrics, don't carry on, okay? You probably shouldn't even have started doing it even now. So boom, there we go, it's now getting dark, but we've done it all, it's all going. Uh, this little beast is absolutely blazing hot at the moment, and it's doing sterling work of taking the chill off out of this little place that I look after my cow hide. <laughs> So yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really pleased with it. I hope this video gives you a better idea of basically how to install an element. Okay, I know we haven't done it inside a towel rail here because that is their usual use, but you can install them in one of these if you like. Okay, you can't do it in a normal radiator because it won't allow you to put the element all the way down it. It won't allow you to thrust it all the way in. Uh, but you can do it on this one here and that's the best thing about it. The great thing is, is that obviously we've got our fantastic Drayton Insta 868 controlling this lot uh, and therefore we've got for once and very rarely a really close way of controlling the temperature and the times that the towel rail will actually come on and off with so you know i think that's a really really handy thing to have especially if you're looking at economy 7 and things like that it's great to know that you've got a little bit more close control over the electricity that you're using if you need any more help or any more information please visit our website plumbingparts.co.uk oh yeah Obviously, you can follow us on Twitter uh, and on Facebook. And above all, the most important thing you can do, subscribe to our videos. Uh, I am now gonna go inside. It uh, doesn't matter what time of year you guys are watching this. It's Christmas time around here, and I'm making some mince pies. I've come up with a random little recipe for them that's got uh, like almonds in it, figs, and of course, plenty of booze as well. Uh, and yeah, I think they're going to be absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you come back next week. And remember, everyone, what have you got to do? I think you know. I think you know. You've got to hold tight throughout the night. Plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice.